Well hello and welcome back to the Rest of Saga workshop and in this episode we're going to be fitting the motors to the toy lander and fitting with some other wee bits and pieces that have been waiting for a while. Also going to have a go at pinned in the bonnet and see if I can finally get a line drawn underneath my paint problems. So I'm starting back with the axles and I've been at it with the paint stripper because some people very some people on here very appropriately pointed out that the stubs should not be painted. So I've paint stripped them off up to about here um, and I'm going to pop the wheels on and put a little hose clamp on the end and just put it down on its four wheels because I do get a little bit nervous of it sitting high up on axle stands as nice as it is having it back here in the garage. So let's have a little look at that. And would you look at that, look at that, four wheels on and just one set on the bonnet there. Um, just to see how it looks. I'm actually really pleased at the shine of the paint and the wheels and it makes look, the paint and the body look substandard. Um, I've just held the wheels on with Jubilee clips at the minute. Um, this wheel here was a bit ignorant to put on. I think there's a slight bend in the axle. I don't know how because I didn't drop it so it must have got either damaged in transit or come like that from Toylander but it's gone on okay. So I've managed that and I think it looks really really good absolutely delighted with this and as you can also see we have some motors have arrived um two rubber mats one for the floor and one for the back one motor there and another motor there also some nuts and bolts and a sprocket and another sp and the chain and the other sprocket is down there and these are the motor mounting plates um for the toy under as well so I think I'm going to get these painted. I'm really starting to get fed up painting things, but that's life. So these are going to get painted. Just going to put them in black hammer out because they have some aerosols over there. Um, and then it's time to get those, work out how these motors go in and do that stage. In terms of price, these two motors, so two of these were 400 pounds. I think that is expensive, um, but they are quite beefy. Well, give that to them. Um, I think they're custom made. I did try and do a little bit of detective work um, to figure out if I could try and source them myself for cheaper but alas I wasn't able to figure it out so it is what it is. They're custom made, they're bespoke and they'll do the job and I know they're going to work. So, And they come with a warranty. Warranty void if removed. So anyway let's get these figured out and then we'll go from there set that there and get these painted so while i'm waiting for the paint to dry on the motor mounting plates i'm back at the bonnet and i've drilled out all these pop rivets um, very carefully so as not to damage anything and this is the spare wheel mount and you can see yep that paint never dried <laughs> um another part of the mounting system there's maybe a little bit more to grab it to take out there, but um, I've managed to get out those without cracking this. I didn't want to have to buy another one. So put that to one side, keep it safe, get the rest of these off, get this paint stripped off, and I get it repainted. I'm so sick of doing this. And I still have to do the dashboard, which is sitting over there. Um, up here, I have, you might be able to see, I've countersunk these holes. In the gearbox of the motor and um, that's as per the instructions and I've also wrapped the motors in plastic to stop any swarf from drilling going in there which I really don't want. And here we're making a start to getting the bonnet stripped. Um, actually the colour coat was still wet and gooey underneath all this unbelievably so I've already scraped a handful of paint off this and that was posted up my Instagram stories but I'm going to get all the paint of this removed and go from there. Really want this all to look as good as it possibly can and have a, still have a spare tin of the RIL1015 paint made up so I might as well use it. But I don't want this particular video to turn into another painting one so we'll move on. Alright so I got my motor mounting plates all painted up both sides um, just with the last of that silver hammer out and here I am struggling. I'm getting the chain on just loose first fit really trying to mark out where the motors are going to go and you can see I've marked this hole here. I clamped it in place a little spacer block at the top because there's another mounting point at the top as well. 
um, the plastic still in the motors to try and keep any swarf out but that is the chain in and that is a fiddle I have a fiddly day job but this is a fiddle hobby at home um, but we got there in the end um, chain seems equal slackness both sides and there's room to move that motor forward anyway um, to try and take up some slack can't really move it back anymore because it's just up against that but if worse comes to worse I can always file out the hole a little bit um, but I don't see why I would need to add slack to this um, so that's good over time the chain will obviously get stretched so I can move the motor up to take that slack so I'm happy with that just need to repeat the same on the other side um, it is so fiddly once that's done then I have some drilling to do. I need to drill a hole through this shaft to put a roll pin and I need to drill through the axle as well to put a washer and a split pin. We'll explain that process as I go along. Um, coming together nicely, slowly but surely. And over on the bench, I said I wouldn't labour this too much. I've got pretty much all the paint off there, so delighted with that. Just gonna get that finished up, clean it off, white spur it, get some primer on, get it painted again, and draw a line onto the body pending of this vehicle. Okay, so I'm going to do this one motor at a time. Um, this motor here is now bolted in. You can see the coach bolts just coming through there. Um, the spacer is just packed in there. It's just held with pressure. Um, I have marked the inside of the wheel hub there on the axle, having measured the distance between seven and eight millimeters of extra hub or extra axle sitting beyond this when that's pushed in um, to allow an axle cap on. So need to take the wheel off and I'm going to put the washer in and the split and then mark again and then put a drill for the split pin, which is a little bit hairy. Um, but I think drilling through this shaft here is going to be even more so. They recommend using a drill press, which I don't have. Um, quite a lot of movement in that brake over there. Um, they recommend using a drill press, which I don't have, but I might be able to improvise. So we'll see how that goes. Let's get this on. I'd like to see one wheel done and then it'll just be easy enough to repeat the process for the second side. And there we go. That is the washer on, held by the split pin. Um, not actually too difficult to draw drill through that axle. Um, nice new drill bit went through it quite easily. It's so time to pop the wheel back on and that should all check my alignment then with a sprocket and then it'll be time to drill through that one which I'm really not looking forward to. So apologies about the tumble dryer and the boiler going over in the corner but it's, it's the household garage. Um, managed actually to freehand drill this through and um, this is the roll pin just about to be tapped through. I'm gonna just take that out. See you'll agree that that's quite a clean hole the whole way through. Five mil drill bit, a little bit of WD-40 to keep it nice and cool and I'm just gonna tap this in. Just support it on this, just so you're not putting any side load on the shaft. And then that will be one motor in. That's quite exciting. And then I'll put a chain on, which I'm not going to video because it's a complete faff, as I said. And that will be us good to go. And now you join me in somewhat cramped quarters underneath the Toylander. And you see the split pin and the big washer there holding the wheel on on the inboard side. The chain is now on with this little... If I can reach around, this little link here is what joins the two sides of the split chain. The braking system is all um, clearance and actually you can see the black mark where it breaks on the inside of the rim. It probably could do with being a little bit more inboard but that's okay it'll bed in over time I'm not too worried about that. The last job I did before fitting the wheel on the chain was to grease the inside of the hub and there's grease nipple there so that's great and in the top I have the top nut in this little spacer button and all those other bolts are linked up. The roll pin is in the sprocket and the grub screw is done up tight. So I think that's a, a bit of a win there tonight. Um, over here, the edge primer is drying on the bonnet. So a step in the right direction there. And I think just to finish off, I'm gonna cut the mat just for the front here. And I'll leave that other side motor to later on in the video. I'll probably not take this through just as much detail on that one because it's exactly the same as this. But that's the, the joy of these things. You learn on one side and then repeat on the other. So let's get on with that and see where we go next. Okay then, finishing this video up um, with a bit of mixed sentiment. Uh, first thing is a bit of a disappointment. So painted the panel, thought it was great, felt dry. Um, actually left it in my downstairs room in, in the heating for a couple of days. 
and then came out to mask up the hinges to paint those. The paint went on the hinges nicely, but then the paper I used to mask off has stuck to the paint so it mustn't be perfectly dry. And look, there's a thumbprint from me lifting it. So that's hugely disappointing. This is, and look, even you can see the masking tape marks there within the paint. Um, so it looks like I'm gonna to have to strip this again and paint it again. Um, I, I'm just so fed up painting this panel. It's third time lucky, I suppose. Um, but I might see, this was the single stage enamel type paint that I got and really it's just been difficult to work with. So I'm gonna see if I can get some of the color matched. I call it two pack, it's not two pack. You put the color coat on and the lacquer on top, but I'm um, gonna get some of that made up somewhere, probably Halfords. Or I might make a visit to um, Paint Man, who seems to be who everyone goes to um, for Land Rover and Toy Lander paint, and maybe I should have just done that in the first place. On the other hand, positive news, I have the second motor in. Um, we'll talk about these in a minute. So, second motor is slightly more tricky to go in. I suspect my axle is not 100% perfectly straight across the body. Um, so if I show you in here, there's slightly less of the motor shaft sticking out there than on that side. But the chain is straight, um, as you can see, so that's good. Um, I also had to do a bit of adjustment on the brakes. The wheels are on, the bearings are greased. So that's great. Two motors in, just ready to be wired up. And we've kept the plastic on just until I'm absolutely 100% sure all the drilling and swarf is out of the way. Now, these arrived. I'm very pleased with these. Um, got these off eBay. I think he's called NGB Dave. Um, but if you just search for Toylander uh, number plates or Toylander registration plates, this uh, very kind gentleman will make you up these 3D printed plastic number plates in half scale. And they're absolutely brilliant. Look, they're absolutely perfect. And I think even his wife will paint them for you if you pay a little bit extra. So I think these two number plates in the Land Rover badges are about 15 pounds, which I'm more than happy to pay. Um, so they're just gonna get plastic primed, black and silver on the numbers. And I think they're gonna look absolutely top notch. So why did I go for IW993? Well, if I bring it around here, two reasons. My own is AIW9993, so if I just took the A off and the 9 off, fitted number one on the plate, it's actually age appropriate. So IW was a local number plate to me um, for around 1948-49, which is roughly when a Series 1 Land Rover such as this would have been in production. So delighted with those. I think they're really cool and they're going to really finish off the vehicle very nicely. I don't really want the Toy Lander badges on it because I'm not sure they're really all that suitable. Um, so what's next? Well, you don't need to see yet more painting and paint stripping. Um, I'm going to get this stripped and repainted. I'm going to paint the number plates and I'm going to have to continue stripping this, uh, which I still haven't got round to, which is the instrument binnacle. Um, next stage, once payday comes, I'm going to buy the motor control box and the batteries probably a charger as well. Um, it's going to get the 24 volt system and pretty much finished then, from what I reckon. Um, my aim is to have this on the road, on the road, I say, for Easter. Um, and my little son is very interested in it, as I'm sure you can imagine. So keep cracking on, see how we get on. And I will be sure to make plenty of videos as I go along. Well, there you go. I really hope you enjoyed that video, getting the motors fitted to the Toy Lander 1 and getting some other bits and pieces done and some exciting stuff to come too. The number plates, the bonnet, and hopefully getting this project finished within the next few episodes. I cannot wait to see my little son driving this around. I think it'll be a huge amount of fun and getting the Toy Lander and the Big Land Rover together will be absolutely brilliant. Thanks very much for watching. Hit the like button down below and give me a subscribe if you don't mind. I reply to all my comments, so if you have any questions or anything, I'm more than happy to answer them. And I'll catch you again very soon. Cheerio.